briefly, as, as you just mentioned, uh, this item is to take a look at a reconfiguration of our K-5 City of Sandy Schools uh, to K-6. Uh, you may know that um, our country schools at times are referred to already are K-6 or even K-8. So one of the things that we have to look at uh, is the, because the source of what's prompted this conversation, this uh, item for discussion, that is the continued growth that we're experiencing uh, in two major areas for us. One is the Loma Vista area and one is the Sequoia area. So a year ago, Scott O'Dell with O'Dell Demographics uh, did a presentation for us regarding our developer piece and was able to showcase uh, these exact numbers and what we could see uh, is coming to San Diego Unified. Loma Vista area is um, between Shaw and Ashland, uh, east of Highland, all the way to McCall. And in the, on, on this particular slide, you're gonna see the amount of homes that they are indicating our plan for that area and the number of students they expect at, at different grade levels. Same thing is outlined for the Sequoia area and as you'll see in many of our uh, back to school nights, our schools continue to get larger and larger. Uh, so as this growth continues, uh, we're noticing that it's also impacting our in-town uh, availability of space, particular at uh, Blossom Bank Middle, Middle School. Uh, we have continued to add portables uh, to the corner uh, tennis courts there at Lambs. At this point, that entire area has been filled up. Uh, not too long ago, we started with the first one, and here we are uh, taking up every space available there. So as the growth continues for Sanger Unified, and as we use up all the available space on that campus, and now potentially having to consider uh, play fields uh, for additional portables, uh, I believe we're in a position now to consider an opportunity to create space uh, at Washington Ackerman, Ackerman Middle School while using existing space uh, within town schools, allowing us the flexibility to have additional space at Washington Academic uh, for the growth that is coming. One of the things that we got to keep in mind is the Ed Complex development out in the Jensen Fowler area. Uh, that first phase of construction is uh, going to be for a secondary level, uh, 9 through 12. So uh, we currently, I believe, a few weeks ago, approved a contract with our architect to continue the design and the development for the next phase, which is more of a high school footprint. High school students are going to start off on this corner. Uh, and if that timeline is delayed behind the amount of growth that we're going to experience, uh, we may not have space <coughs> for the junior high uh, students uh, on our campus, and we do not have another year now. So by reconfiguring our in-town schools, we create space opportunity at WAMS, allows us a little bit of opportunity to build out our complex on the uh, Jensen and Fowler area, and creates uh, flexibility and maneuverability with our facilities and limited funding resources. Uh, currently, there are 470 students as of uh, the 8th of this month. This also includes our 6th graders that may be coming to us from our country schools. There are some students, uh, including from Delray or possibly even from the Sequoia area, who choose to come into WAMS uh, for their 6th grade year. Uh, rolling 5th graders forward, who are going to be next year 6th graders, there are 432 students just in the in-town schools. Uh, so those are students that we have to work to uh, accommodate at their sixth grade uh, site, at their current elementaries. So this is a breakdown currently. Um, Wilson, uh, we have seven students that can fit into two classrooms. We currently have two fifth grades, Jefferson 75. Um, Lincoln at 44, I put an asterisk by Lincoln, although that is seems to be one of the smaller numbers. Uh, we also got to take into consideration that there is a mainstream opportunity for our special day uh, students. Uh, so we believe that by having a two classroom there, like they do in fifth grade, allows for that um, opportunity for our kids to take advantage of uh, being mainstream. Uh, and we also see in the primary grades, Lincoln uh, growth uh, is um, increasing. Uh, and we, we've we seen this before at Lincoln where they sort of have um, peaks and valleys in their attendance. We're seeing that more in the primary now again. Uh, Madison continues with 70 students into two classrooms. Jackson at 80 students into three classrooms. Reagan 84 students, 84 students into three classrooms. And the remaining schools in blue are existing sixth grade classroom students at their schools. So you can see you know, how, they, how they recommended um, 
the amount of six way classrooms matches up to what we're doing at our schools uh, around in the country. Center Row with one classroom with 31 students, 33 on Delray, 66, 86, 66, and Sequoia with a well rounded number of 111 six way students. Um, so, again, six way. Oh, yeah. So, this again begins the process for discussion, question. We believe that this is an issue of space and maximizing every one of our seats. That the trend in the in-town schools is pretty steady. In talking with our principals as we look at staffing levels for next year, they've indicated that their uh, growth or trend has been pretty steady. One particular school in the city of Sanger is ticking up, and that is Reagan Elementary. Reagan Elementary is starting to duplicate what we've seen at John Walsh and Sequoia. Uh, where they are now at four kinders, four first grade, and you have a third grade classroom about, um, as a student, a third grade class around 80 plus kids. So those homes in development may now see the kids come through that community. <coughs> um, every one of these um, schools will still have to go through a logistics circumstance to vet out, but we don't believe that the logistics are gonna be insurmountable, that the opportunity for space and flexibility as a result of limited resources that uh, we are being afforded is uh, something to take advantage of. Logistics, um, a lot of different uh, groups have been invited to be part of this conversation, including transportation, town nutrition, <coughs> after school programs, camp clubs, athletics, PE, visual performing arts, special education, all of the principals have been uh, involved from in town. We also included one from Square Elementary to give their perspective. Uh, our human resource department is gonna be involved uh, to the methods that we use uh, that we will take into consideration. And of course, finance. You know, budgets are going to have to be adjusted at their sites as their uh, class loads or total enrollment is going to increase. Um, one of the uh, main pieces was finding space. What does the space look like at elementary so they're going to have sufficient space? So, what I'd like to show you is walk through um, the different school sites and some of their opportunities that we have here. And I'll walk through each school site. Um, and be able to share a little bit about the space they have and outline potential classrooms. Again, I've spoken with all of the in-town principals already and all have uh, uh, indicated that they can consolidate services and have space on their campuses. This is Wilson Elementary. So they're gonna be looking at this wing right here, there's about four classrooms. And those spaces currently, uh, there are some that have music or lead, which functions in the after school. Uh, there's another program which uh, they're using for intervention or ELD because they believe they can consolidate and create at least two open spaces uh, on that campus, possibly up to three if perhaps they were to take the TK classroom and move it to Jefferson. Currently TK and Wilson Elementary houses uh, Wilson and Jefferson students splitting the total enrollment uh, at this point. Wilson, uh, excuse me, Jefferson having a little bit more space. Uh, in the event that we need, I needed to grow or accommodate any future growth, although we don't see any development in this area, uh, we have begun to explore their uh, future development of this site. Uh, as you may know, uh, Wilson is going to go through a reconfiguration of their campus. If you were anywhere near the future adult school site, you saw the demolition begin today. Uh, so that campus, meaning the adult school, is going to be receiving these portables here uh, to begin their uh, campus, but Wilson will be looking more like this uh, once that uh, reconfiguration occurs there from the site, I mean, from reconfiguration specific to their site. So they'll be gaining some uh, parking spaces, amphitheater area, a relocation of one portable, uh, so we wanted to explore opportunities if we needed growth, particularly kindergarten. Uh, some of the kindergarten, current kindergarten classrooms are in a regular wing, and according to our new governor, he's willing to fund possibly a 50% opportunity to expand classroom spaces. So we want to look into all this here in this corner. Where's the playground going to go? For, for the, they're in this area right here. Okay. You see that right? Mm -hmm. From uh, hopscotch, uh, tetherball. I have two shade covers here, but this is where the playground structures are. That's where the park is, the parking lot? That is there, yeah, kind of to the north mm -hmm. of the NPR. So uh, they can house their current sites by right now. But we're gonna move over to, from here, Jefferson. 
Surfton has a little bit more space, um, not only classroom space, but also physical space. Uh, as you can tell on their campus, this area to the south of the main wings is available. There is a solar panel array here, but we can easily go down this uh, line of portables if we needed to reconfigure. Uh, when we spoke with Jefferson, uh, they were very easy to accommodate it. He listed at least six possible spaces that he could use for classrooms. Uh, he consolidated some spaces. Uh, so more than enough space for his two classrooms, including the consideration if he needed to relocate a TK classroom to his campus. Uh, <coughs> these classrooms will also uh, provide us an opportunity to accommodate all of this growth that is coming in uh, here at Jefferson. Our next school, Lincoln, is going to be one of the more um, limited uh, space sites, uh, but in um, talking with Mr. Gonzalez, he was able to make it work. He will be using, by consolidating some services, uh, with room nine and room four, uh, and perhaps even relocating uh, some district-wide services off that campus to a different location, provide a third space if necessary. But for the two sixth grade classrooms, uh, he has availability in his uh, center wing and the classroom on the end as well. Uh, so enough space there. One of the other areas that we want to look at for uh, Lincoln as we do for all our sites is what would growth look like? Um, although there is no uh, immediate uh, development for Lincoln, uh, there is an adjoining area on North and Greenwood that we keep hearing potentially that could be development. So uh, down the road we would have to uh, keep those things in mind. But as you can see, there's portables here that have gone down this area. This could also be a campus that we consider for an opportunity for the kinder funding. One of their kinders is displaced into one of the regular wing classrooms. Mm -hmm. But you have this entire area here mm -hmm. that you know could create an opportunity for both a preschool and kinder and TK to take advantage of uh, by consolidating playgrounds. As you can see, there's seems to be two areas and a small area here uh, and allowing for uh, one whole area for those uh, gray levels there. From there, Matt. Let's well, go real quick on Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Go to the south a little bit, so pull that up. Go, yeah, look to the, keep going. Um, all that area on the south end is also Sunder Unified. That's oh, part of Lincoln that's School. That. You know, that, I don't know. Lincoln Park, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's school. Yeah. The school's yeah. been letting the city use it for a park okay. for years, but that is available also if we need it. We own it. Yeah, I'm not sure, uh, I wasn't sure how many individuals knew that nugget of information, uh, but you know, definitely something that's available. Um, we've been in discussions at times about fields. You know, we, we need more fields and more fields. There's an area there, as you can see, we have two fields right here, but there is some space uh, for growth here. Um, but that's all one school site. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. From Lincoln, we go to Madison. Um, Madison is probably the most restricted site uh, right now. Uh, they have one physical space uh, available with their uh, conversion of the old NPR. Their library is now available. It is a large classroom space. Um, we are working on a master plan to expand into this area with portables. Uh, so there is scheduled to be a second portable available since they do have uh, two. Um, we also believe that there may be another consolidation of services that could create an opportunity, but as for now, this space and a portable would accommodate. For growth opportunities, because that area that we keep hearing about on Greenwood is in the Madison area, you would have to consider <coughs> to the east of this campus. Uh, there's plenty of opportunity here. Uh, this map doesn't do the campus justice. <coughs> the new NPR is in this area. Their new playground structure is in this area with a new blacktop. So all of their play fields are all on this field, um, west side, and the east side is available for growth. This is another campus that we're hoping we can take advantage of any kinder opportunity funding because their kinder building now houses TK and preschool, and the kinder classrooms are in a regular wing. So we can create true kinder classrooms if we want to take an advantage of that for them. <coughs> Especially if the governor's going to pay for half of that. That takes us to Madison. Jackson definitely has uh, a bit more uh, space, uh, not just in the NPR, but classroom as well. Uh, 
Um, so when we looked at, at uh, Jackson, they identified at least three spaces either for consolidation or repurposing to be able to house their classrooms. And they also have other space usages that we could relocate and have plenty of space here. This campus gets a little bit more challenging for growth as we obviously place a new NPR in this corner. But uh, I believe that down this area here could provide an opportunity for uh, for those that needed to. Uh, but again, this is an area that not doesn't have any future development for it right now. So we believe that the spaces they have right now uh, would suffice. I think it would be in our interest to uh, right now do a standby on the conversion of the old NPR in case that is needed for something else. How old are these pictures? I know. <laughs> Whatever, however, Whatever Google, Google, Google Maps do, yeah, right? it does it. Exactly. That's not Google. This is the free version. That's Apple's, isn't it? Uh, is no, Google? it's Google Maps. Well, Google Maps. You yeah. go to Google Earth. It's, yeah. August, it's August of this year. Um, it'll have the houses around Reagan. Well, yeah. well I'm here. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember every bell <laughs> Reagan, Reagan has obviously the six new portables, uh, and there's definitely space on there. We identified at least three different spaces, and if we relocate these services, uh, we'll have uh, an opportunity there. So we think that with the growth that they're experiencing, uh, there's going to be more than enough space in their classrooms right now uh, for them with the portables. They are, to a degree, built out as we look at this area. Uh, there was an architect at one point who thought they could squeeze classrooms into this area. We consolidated this playground space. Um, sure seems like there could be an opportunity, but they are also reaching a, a high number. Um, when we look at the total enrollment. Um, else they're reaching 596, and uh, they're adding possibly uh, another classroom. So they are growing as a site. Potentially could be the capacity of John Washer Square. So, from a facility standpoint, which I think is really at the root of this uh, discussion, uh, we believe that uh, reconfiguring our K-5 to K-6s allows for that flexibility, allows WAMs to continue to provide services and space for our 7th and 8th grade students that uh, are needed for a, from a district-wide sense. Uh, and it also allows us to continue to build out our education complex uh, and to a degree get ahead of this growth uh, curve that we've been experiencing. So I know that was a lot that could be said, but definitely want to open it up for discussion um, and dialogue. I love it. I, I think that the majority of the parents will love it also. Coming from a parent's point of view. And I think it's a good uh, resolution to what we're trying to work with. Well, we went to the sixth grade move. The, the board made that decision before Reagan was built. Mm -hmm. You've built three elementaries since that mm -hmm. time, and at that time, we didn't have any room at the elementaries, and it was a fix for it until we could get some construction going. Mm -hmm. Now that the district has been able to build some schools, we now can go back to where we were. And some of the growth trends, you know, when you look at um, Wilson, there was a point where they had five primary classrooms. They sort of leveled off. They continue to stay on that trend for now without any new development in that area. We can see, uh, as Mr. Garcia also indicated, that they're pretty steady with the number of classrooms they have in the grid. Pretty consistent is what we're seeing. Reagan, about the only one that's seen a, an uptick. And I think at the time, everybody had all the developers that came into town making big promises. We were going to have houses all the way to 180. You know, all of that was going on, and they were trying to plan ahead. How are we going to handle it? And things have changed. Well, and that's the hardest part. Sitting on the school board for 12 years, that's the hardest part, is trying to figure out what's going to happen five, seven, ten years from now. <coughs> that is the influx of, of students. Yeah. You know, that, that's a crystal ball thing. 
And if somebody, you know, we have developers that want to come in, they're telling us they're gonna come in, so we're trying to accommodate for that, and then they back for whatever reason. It doesn't happen yeah. uh, now. Our a very difficult process. Our demographers have mentioned that, that there is a, a science to this, but a lot of it also there's an art piece to it, and then trying to anticipate when they could come, and, and you noted in that one slide, Loma, this time, the big question that we keep getting at, but when? When yeah, is it gonna when? come? Mm -hmm. And, you know, not only do, um, Construction factors <coughs> come into play, but uh, local economy, state yeah. economy, national That's economy, right. if that were to change, you know, our egg yeah. complex is in location very different from what it originally was going to be. Uh, and if it hadn't been for the downturn in the economy, um, we still may have been north of the city of San Diego versus west. And I wonder how long that 1.5 children is going to <laughs> stay with us no. because this. These generations that are coming up aren't having children, or they're waiting for a very long time to have children. So I'm just, I'm just curious about how that's going to affect us. You know, um, we are one of the blessed districts in that we continue to grow, you know, we, we, um, <laughs> we that, multiply. That, 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 that may be the case, <laughs> but we are a growing district, and I think all of the work by our staff, both certificated and classified, and, and all the team members continue to provide the kind of service that parents are looking for. And be, uh, moving into our uh, community provides a great opportunity for families and kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we see that in, in, a, in the uh, Sequoia area, in the Vista area, and we think that that's a good thing for us. And mm -hmm. we want to be ready uh, as that growth continues. And I think this puts us in an uh, opportunity to maximize every resource rather than wait and be reactive. Mm -hmm. And also the manure building. Questions? There'll be still uh, enough room at the schools for physical activities. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't want to deprive the students of. Uh, now, um, we have a discussion here. I think the only one school that's affected as far as grass space mm -hmm. is Quail Lake. Mm -hmm. Quail Lake is built on five acres, uh, and they use the Pondy Basin to expand uh, for a grass play area. At our in town schools, should be fine. That's where we're like at Wilson, we're looking more towards the southwest corner where that's established versus them going to the other area to their plate. So we're maximizing their uh, ball fields and still have their fields for the, uh, the football or any other soccer activities that could take place in there. So and, and of course, the new, the new play structures that they're getting. Right. So eventually, uh, I don't know if you stated earlier where they might move the sportables out of the tennis courts there at Glam's. Uh, up at 10th Street? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the uh, the opportunity that it could provide for us, you know, number one, if we leave the portables at WAMS, it provides expansion for San Jose Creek. If we're not able to continue forward or we're delayed in the ed complex complete build out, then we can grow into those portables. If those portables are needed uh, for additional accommodations, whether in town or out of town, then we can definitely use any of the portables that we have that in. We've moved portables before. I think the first two portables that were placed on that corner were two kindergarten portables from Sangre Academy were uh, relocated to make room for the NPR there. Uh, so that flexibility is afforded to us by having them available and, and reconfiguring into the K-5 zone. Go ahead. Yeah, so I wanted to ask you move forward with uh, the next step in the process. We will bring it forward for with a recommendation at the next board. Oh, okay. Yeah. This one was just discussion, Mr. Yeah. No, I just for questions. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.